Welcome to Beal's Science. You know, this is one of the most incredible things I've ever seen. I've been making some videos with Mr. G from the Mr. G Science Show, and we've been working with lasers. And when he showed me this one, it just completely blew my mind. Really, what we're gonna do is send sound, or send information, on a laser. We're gonna show you how you can send sound on a laser. I'm with Mr. G again from Mr. G Science Show. Yeah. And this is one of my favorite things that he does at the Mr. G Science Show. He sends sound across a light wave. So we're gonna use light, and we wanna get information back from light. Well, one of the easiest ways is to have a solar cell. That's what's right here. And when light hits it, it'll create a small electrical voltage, consequently a current, electrical current, and we're gonna have that flow to a speaker, through, an, through a stereo speaker. But if we were to interrupt the light beam, that would make a change in the light beam, which makes a change in the electricity, which makes the speaker vibrate, which makes sound. So here's the simplest change. One finger. Or with four fingers. This is a tuning fork. It's vibrating. It will vibrate in the light beam, which will make the light beam flicker on and off and on and off. At this particular frequency, He's going to take us through all the technicals of how he set this up. You're going to help me build one yep. so that we can show you how to build one, but also so I can have one for my classroom. Yep. And then he's going to get a little bit weird with some really cool things and sending some music across this as well. And we're just going to keep piling it on and see what happens. But this particular laser, and we'll show this in close up later, is a special one because the clip that would go on your pocket protector. That's the switch for turning the laser on and off. And so here's a way to make that connection without pushing the little clip down. Two alligator clips, one to this side of the resistor, and the other side of the resistor I'm holding to the switch, which is the clip of the laser. And now, and now I have a red laser beam. The next thing is going to a solar cell. And that's gonna create a little electrical current I've attached the little tiny wires that come from a solar cell to another wire that has a 3.5 millimeter plug. And I have a tiny little amplified speaker. So I plug that into there. And I could do this little experiment just with this, with this little speaker. The next thing I'm gonna do though is to make it louder. I'm taking this speaker and I'm, I'm connecting it to my stereo. So now we have the setup, a laser beam to the solar cell, amplified a little bit, to the stereo. So whatever we do to the light beam, that information will come back to us as sound. So if we make a vibration of a light beam, it'll make a vibration of the speaker, which is sound. We have more fingers. But we could also send information of something simple like a comb and the frequency of the comb teeth going through the light beam. We could send information about a, a little fan going by. This is pretty high frequency, so it should be like a pretty high note. Not a real nice note, but it's making one. It turns out we could also even just spray some dust into the laser beam. We can take a remote control, which as you know is magic. Push a button and something happens. It's actually flashing at you, infrared light. The solar cell can actually detect the flash. We will hear it as a beep. All things that are wireless, this is wireless, you know, because there is no wires, it's sending information on light waves. It's true of your cell phone. It's sending information on light waves because there's no wires. A cell phone is using microwaves. And if you have a radio, it's sending information on radio waves. So uh, let me explain. The, the setup that Mr. G showed over here, it's got the alligator clips running to the 3.5, right. the headphone jack, is gonna go into the computer, and the computer's gonna send a signal out to the laser. It's going to interrupt yep. the light, which should then send a signal through the wire over to the speaker, and we'll hear the sound. Ready? Yeah. Let's give it a shot, see if it happens. Okay, the thing to notice is, is this light beam is, is flickering and flashing with just all that subtlety to carry that sound information on the light beam. 
And if you want to make it hip hop, take your comb while it's playing. Next, I'm going to plug my cell phone. Okay. So it connects to the laser. My friend Craig is going to call me on his cell phone. Whatever comes to my phone that is changed into sound should go back and turn the laser on and off. We think this is going to work. No, no. We're scientists. We're real, trying. Real experiment time here. <laughs> And if you don't think this is fantastic, you've got something wrong with you because this is, this is, this is then I'm not showing it right. If, it's, <laughs> if you don't think it's fantastic, I'm not doing something right because this is amazing. It's ringing. Hello. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming out of the studio. Oh, you did it. We did it. Again? Mr. G? Bye. Oh yeah, you bet. <laughs> this is this is absolutely incredible. It really is. I mean, but this is this seems like such a novel, weird, odd thing, but this is how information is sent in the information age. After a whole lot of experimenting, this is the simplest method that we've come up with. I'm gonna walk you through the supplies that you need to build your own one of these. If I just wanna, you know, play with the laser and run my hand through it and get it to make different sounds, I could just hold it down with a simple binder clip right here, like so. But if I want to be more complex, I need to do this. We've got a 3.5 jack that's going to RCA. Those RCA are then hooked into alligator clips. Notice the white side is to the center pin, and the red side is to the outside edge of the other part of the RCA. Then we run up here to our laser. I've got one side hooked here, so we're not making a connection here. The connection is happening here and down through the cable and into the computer so that it can turn the light on and off. This is just a simple setup with a binder clip, okay, and then a three point or the alligator clip is hooked to that. So then our laser comes on. Okay, the laser's shooting over here and the light is hitting this very simple solar cell. Now I've got it covered up because the fluorescent lights from above are interfering with it. And then We've got that running down to alligator clips again. Those alligator clips are running over here to another RCA to 3.5. I've got it hooked on the outside edge here. The center pin on the white, that's running over here to the little mini amplifier. And then we've just got a 3.5 to 3.5 or headphone jack to headphone jack running up here into the speaker. Well, a good question is, how close do we need to have that laser to the solar cell to be able to get this to work? Well, we don't have to have it close. In fact, I've moved way down here and the solar cell is now clear across the room. But I could go as far away as possible. As long as I'm still sending light, this is still gonna work. Oh, got it. We're shooting it long distance way down there and we're sending it, man. Look at every time I... Doesn't matter. As long as you can get the light there, you can send the signal. Here's what's funny to me. In class, I'm doing this with the students, and I turn on some music that plays into here. It causes the laser to turn on and off, right? And go over here, and the sound comes out over there. My students said to me, no, that's not doing it. You're doing Bluetooth. You're sending Bluetooth over to the speaker. But what the students don't realize is, if I was sending Bluetooth over to the speaker, it's no less magical, because Bluetooth is just a light wave being sent to a receptor that's turning on and off. The exact same thing we have going on here. So it was funny to me because the kids are like, oh yeah, no, totally, I'll accept that Bluetooth works, but not that this little laser is turning on and off and on and off. That's what I like so much about what Mr. G has shown us. He's shown us that it's a very simple concept for something very complex, like every time we make a phone call or send something via Bluetooth to something else. Hey, I appreciate you watching. We've got several other amazing videos with Mr. G and the Mr. G Science Show. Check them out, they'll be popping up on the screen. Come over to BeelScience.com, hit the subscribe button somewhere over there. Leave me a comment, let me know what you think. But thanks for watching and keep on learning. And I can't thank you enough for, for sharing all of this stuff that you've worked on for years and years. We're not gonna do a chest bump, I can't jump anymore. <laughs> <laughs> For years and years he's been working on these things and he's just been more than willing to share them yes. with all of us.